Hello and welcome back. Well, we all love to travel. But before we can get on a plane and jet off to our next destination, we need to plan our trip. And planning our travel comes with a lot of questions. So in this video, we've put together 10 most frequently asked questions about planning your travel to help you efficiently plan your next adventure. So let's get started. To check the visa requirements for your destination, there are a number of tools available online, including government websites and embassy websites. My personal favorite one is on Emirates uh, Airlines website, where you just go to emirates.com, click on manage visa and passport information, then fill in the details, so the country of your passport, the destination you're traveling to. Uh, also, you add any transit countries. If you're transiting through any countries, click Find, and it will give you all the information. It will also tell you if you need to fill in any ETA or arrival details, and it will provide you the links with those details as well. So you'll get everything in one place. Different countries have different vaccination requirements. Some countries don't have any requirements at all. And some countries have quite a strict requirements where you have to provide the proof of vaccination. There are two ways you can check what vaccines are required for a destination. Number one is you can check the CDC website and the link will be in the description. Alternatively, and I think this is the best way to do it, is to visit your local doctor and discuss your destination with them. They will have all the up-to-date requirements for any vaccine possible and you potentially can get them right there on the spot. How safe is the destination? Well, this is a very subjective question and it depends on so many different factors, including your nationality, your experience of travel, uh, your previous travel history, etc. Right? But there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, you can check the travel advisories either on US website or on UK government website, and I'll have the links be below in the description, or on just about any government uh, website, they will have some sort of travel advisory. But that's not all. I think understanding the advisory is one thing. Understanding a destination is different. And advisories tend to be more on a safer side. Right, so they will over exaggerate the threats in a lot of ways. Um, I think you do need to do your own research as well. Have a look at Facebook groups, have a look at Reddit groups, etc., and see what the current tourists are saying about your destination. Well, you've probably heard the expression cash is king, and when it comes to travel, it remains the case. Even in countries where credit cards are accepted everywhere, etc., there could be the case when you need cash. So, when traveling, it's highly recommended that you always carry some cash with you, even just to get you through the day or to get you back to your hotel if you can't use the credit card for some reason. Always carry some cash with you. And in other countries, cash still remains the king. And you can get discounts by using cash, and, you know, in some cases, they just don't take cards. They only take cash in some countries. So, yes, always carry cash with you. Generally speaking, when booking your travel, it's better to book yourself, especially if you have a simple travel, like you're flying to a destination, you're staying at a destination, and you're flying back. It's basically booking the airline tickets and booking the hotel and booking some tours at your destination. Those trips, there is no question, you should book yourself. There are occasions where you should use travel agent for a more complex uh, travel solutions and especially where you're constantly moving from one place to another and you've got some prearranged tours, uh, especially if it's with a guide, etc. Right? But it's a complex travel arrangement. So yeah, in those cases, yeah, it's probably better to use travel agents, but it's still, if you do it yourself, it will be cheaper. Now, on to 
bookings through websites uh, like booking.com, Agora, etc., versus booking direct with hotels. Traditionally, historically, it was better to book on the aggregate websites because they used to provide better pricing. But that hasn't been the case for the last few years. And quite often, if you go directly to any hotel, or especially big chain hotel, they will also have a price match guarantee, etc. So if for whatever reason their rates are higher than, let's say, booking.com, they will match that price. But there are a number of benefits of booking directly as well, because you, first of all, you directly with the provider, you don't have a middleman in between, if for any issues you can uh, deal directly with the hotel, and the loyalty programs, so if you do sign up for any of the loyalty programs, you get additional benefits. So, to answer your question, yes, generally it is better to book direct. Should you book travel insurance? That's a very good question. And there are a lot of different theories and views on that subject. I think, in principle, yes, you should. Travel insurance, just like any other insurance in your life, protects you from unexpected. Things do happen. When traveling, you're in unfamiliar environments. You're in a different country. And when things go wrong, quite often it is very hard to resolve them or it can be extremely costly. So in, in that respect, travel insurance protects you from the unexpected when traveling and gives you a bit of peace of mind and you know that if something does go wrong, you are covered. However, there are also cases where you probably don't need travel insurance. And again, that comes to a simpler trips. Let's say if you traveling to your neighboring state or to your neighboring country, let's say if you live in Paris and going to UK uh, for a couple of days, right? That's simple travel, more or less familiar environment. That's probably where you can skip the travel insurance. Additionally, what a lot of people don't know is a lot of credit cards offer free travel insurance if you use the credit card to book the travel. So, before going out and actually buying a travel insurance, just check with your credit card provider to see if they do offer travel insurance, because then you can just simply save some money. Group travel or solo travel? Well, there are advantages and disadvantages to each one of them. With solo travel, you have a freedom of do what you want, when you want, and how you want it. Whether with group travel is generally planned and you have to travel with the group and do things that are planned for the group. However, on the other side is when traveling as a group, you generally don't feel lonely. You have always someone to talk to, someone to mingle with, etc. When you're traveling solo, from what we've heard is some people do get depressed, they get lonely, especially if they're struggling to make friends during their travels. But ultimately, the decision between group travel and solo travel comes down to your nature. What do you like? And I think you should try both of them. You should try and experience both solo travel and group travel and see which one fits you best. But there are also cases where group travel is better and there are cases where solo travel is better. So let's say if you're going for a program like uh, a fitness travel, etc., right? Group travel is better in those cases. If you just want to get away and explore something, then yeah, solo travel would be better in that case. Well, that's a good question. Yes, budget airlines are budget, hence the name budget airlines. But there is always a but. And, and here's the things you need to consider. They are budget for a basic travel. If you just want to get on a plane and go from A to B, just like a bus, then yes, they are cheap, they are convenient. 
However, if you're traveling, let's say, with the family, if you've got some luggage with you, then budget airlines no longer become budget. In many cases, by the time you add carry-on luggage, checked-in luggage, etc., the price quite often comes up higher than just buying a flight on normal, non-budget airline. So, I think before booking, have a look at how you're traveling, what you're carrying with you, etc., and then figure out the price on both on budget airline and not budget airline. But quite often, as I said, if you have checked in luggage, especially if there's a number of people traveling with you, then yes, budget airline will become more expensive than non-budget airline. Okay, how far in advance should you actually plan your travel and book your travel? Well, historically, booking in advance used to be cheaper. That's no longer the case. Again, over the last two years, the travel industry changed dramatically. And providers now tend to keep the prices higher for longer. So they will only reduce the prices towards the end if they're not getting enough customers. So if a flight is, let's say, high empty two weeks before the departure, then, they, then yes, they will start reducing the prices. But if you look at the flights six months out, eight months out, they tend to be all at full price. There is no discounts, etc. Things you need to consider is if you wait till the last minute, you may not have the spot. The, the, the flights might be booked out, right? So, But if you book too early, you're probably overpaying as well. So I think you need to find somewhere in the middle ground. It's not too early, not like six months, you know, a year in advance, but maybe I would say one to two months in advance is a good marker to consider booking your travel. How do you find cheap flights? Well, that's a big question. We all want to save money on flights because flights are horrendously expensive right now. And over the last few years, they just went up and up and up. So there is really no 100% way to find cheap flights. There are couple of tools available online. One of the better ones is Google Flights. You can plug in your departure, your destination, and approximate dates when you want to travel, see what's available. And then you can also set alerts. Uh, so when the price does fluctuate, uh, Google will send you an email and will notify you of price changes. So you can monitor the prices. And if you see the price drop, you can pick up a cheaper flight. Additionally, there is another hack you can do, and it's not complex, but it does work most of the time. And I've got the whole video on it. Um, I'll link it in the description as well, because it's a bit too long to explain. But it does work, and I've used it multiple times to quite a good you know, success. Best time to book the flights. Well, there's been a lot of videos circulating on, you know, is it better to book the flight on Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, etc. There is no difference. Uh, airline prices fluctuate constantly and they fluctuate multiple times in the day. I mean, you can check the flight in the morning and one hour later it will be completely different price. So there is no best time to book the flight. What you should do is you should use something like Google Flights. You should set up the alerts and monitor the price ch changes. And when the price drops, you book the flight. Things like booking on a particular date or using VPN to find cheaper flights, it doesn't work. I have a video where I've tested the VPN method and it clearly does not work. Sometimes, yes, uh, what happens is airlines will announce the sales, right? So they will say, let's say next Tuesday we'll have 50% off on all, on all tickets. But that's not because it's Tuesday, right? It's just the sale that airline announces. And it doesn't mean that the following Tuesday they will have the same pricing of 50% off. No. So 
there is no best time to book. Right now, if you planning ahead, I think the ultimate, you know, sweet spot of booking is about two to three months before your flight. It's not the most expensive tickets, but it's also not the cheapest. But at the same time, you're not risking of no availability of the tickets if you wait too long. Well, and that's it. The 10 most frequently asked questions about travel and travel planning. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you found it educational and hopefully it will help you plan your next adventure. Thanks for watching and happy and safe travel.